Welcome to a video on half angle identities. The goal of this video is to use half angle identities to determine function values. So here we see all of the half angle identities. Notice a lot of these seem very similar, so be very careful when you copy them down. Notice that the first three have a plus or minus sign on them. What this tells us is that we have to determine whether the function value will be positive or negative based upon the quadrant of angle A over 2. I did include the derivation of these identities. We don't have time right now to go through them, but you may want to pause the video and see how we can obtain these formulas. And the next slide also shows how to find the half angle identity for a tangent. Again, notice that it comes from taking sine of one half theta and dividing by a cosine one half theta. But let's go ahead and take a look at some problems. Here we want to determine the exact value of sine pi over eight. So we know we're going to use this identity. The first thing we should do is find the value of angle A. There's a couple ways of doing that. We want A over two to equal pi over eight. So if we perform cross products, we'll have eight A must equal two times pi dividing by eight we can see that a must equal two pi over eight or pi over four. So when we set this up, we're gonna have the sine of pi over eight equals the sine of pi over four divided by two. So we're gonna use pi over four for angle a. Another way to think of it is we want pi over eight to equal a over two, we'd have to double this and then divide by two for them to be equal. Okay, so subbing this into our formula, we're going to have plus or minus the square root of, root of one minus the cosine of angle A, which is pi over four, which is good news because that's one of those reference angles, and then divided by two. So if you don't have your unit circle handy, we should sketch pi over four in standard position. It's actually a 45, 45 right triangle. So the cosine of pi over four would be one over square root two. Or if we rationalize that, we would have square root two over two. So we'll have one minus square root of two over two, all over two. Now, let's clear the fractions in the numerator. So we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom by positive two underneath the square root. When we do this, we'll have two times one, that'll give us two minus square root of two divided by two times two will give us the square root of two, and then two times two, of course, is four. Our last step, since pi over eight is in the first quadrant, we know our function value will be positive. Next, the square root of four would equal two, and then our numerator does not simplify. And we have now found our function value that we were looking for. Sine of pi over eight is equal to the square root of two minus the square root of two, all divided by two. Let's go ahead and check this on the graphing calculator. Here you can see I've compared the sine of pi over eight in radians to the exact value that we found, and they are the same, which verifies our work. We want to find the exact value of cosine 105 degrees. So we'll use this identity. Again, if we want A over two to equal 105 degrees, we'd have to double this. So 210 divided by two will give us 105 degrees. So we're gonna use 210 degrees for angle A. Again, if we don't have our unit circle handy, cosine of 210 degrees that would be 30 degrees past 180. Makes us a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, so we have one, two, square root three, but both the x and the y coordinates would be negative. So the cosine of 210 degrees would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or negative square root three over two. Next, let's clear the fractions again, so I'll multiply the top and the bottom inside the square root by two. Well, two times one would be two. 
2 times square root 3 divided by 2 would be negative square root 3. And then 2 times 2, of course, is 4. And then lastly, 105 degrees falls in the second quadrant where the x-coordinate would be negative, therefore the cosine value would be negative. So this will be negative. The square root of 4 would give us 2, and the numerator does not simplify. We have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. And there's our function value. Okay, we have one more question. Here we're given cosine a is equal to negative two-thirds in the second quadrant. We want to determine cosine a over two, sine of a over two, and tangent a over two. First thing I want to make a note of is angle a is in the second quadrant, which means it's between nine degrees and 180 degrees. So a over two will be between 90 degrees and 45 degrees which means it's in quadrant one. What that tells us is all of these function values will be positive. So let's just make a note of that here. All function values will be positive. Next, let's go ahead and sketch this angle in the standard position. We're in the second quadrant, so here's our reference triangle. And this reference angle has a cosine value of negative two-thirds. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine this third side of this reference triangle, and it will equal the square root of five. Let's go ahead and try to find these function values. Cosine of a over two is equal to the square root of one plus cosine a, which is negative two thirds, all over two. Remember, we already determined all these would be positive. Let's go ahead and clear the fractions. Our denominator would be six. The numerator would be three plus negative two, which would give us square root of one-sixth, which is equal to one over the square root of six. And if we rationalize this, we would have the square root of six over six. Let's go ahead and try to find the sine of a over two. So we have square root of one minus cosine a, so one minus negative two-thirds, all over two. Again, clearing the fraction. By multiplying the top and the bottom by the denominator three, We'd have six again in our denominator. And here we'd have three plus two, which equals the square root of five, six, which equals the square root of five over the square root of six. Let me rationalize this. We will have the square root of 30 all over six. And we have one more. We want to find the tangent of a over two. Notice we have a variety of options here. I'm going to go ahead and use the last one this time. Of course, if we have sine of a over two and cosine of a over two, we could just find the quotient of the two, but I'll go ahead and use the identity. One minus cosine angle a, which is given as negative two-thirds, all over the sine of angle a. Going back over to our reference triangle, the sine of angle a would be opposite over hypotenuse, or square root of five over three. One minus negative two-thirds, that would work out to five-thirds. And then instead of dividing by the square root of five over three, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. This simplifies nicely. So we have a function value of five over the square root of five, which is correct, but we'll rationalize it one more time. So we have five square root of five all over five, which simplifies to square root of five for the tangent of a over two. Okay, that was quite a bit of work and a lot of algebra involved, so be very careful when you work through these problems, and I wish you success. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.